Hey guys, this is Kayla with Becky's Graphic Design in Nashville, Tennessee, and today I'm going to teach you, or rather show you, reasons that your text might be disappearing entirely and why you can't seem to find it anymore. So the most common occurrence I find in my text disappearing is this, number one, that a style of no break has become applied to the body. Let me show you what happens. First of all, if you don't know what the no break style is, it is a style, uh, a character style that you create and then apply to your body that prevents orphans or widows from occurring in your paragraph. An orphan or a widow is a single little character at the very end of the text. Let me see if I can find one. Um, here. You see the single word that's all alone by itself? When you apply a character style of no break, InDesign will automatically prevent this from happening. So to get started, let's go ahead and make that. I'm going to find out what style this is. This is called normal. This has been brought in from a Word document. Uh, let's go ahead and edit normal. Now I'm going to go down to grep style. Now we're going to make a new character style of no break. And this doesn't have to be called no break. It could be called cheeseburgers for all that matters. Um, but I just apply it here so I know what it is. The only thing we need to do in this character style is to go over to this little box here and make sure it is a check on no break. Now that we've done that, we click OK. And now we have to tell InDesign to what you are applying no break, how much text. To do this, we are going to type dot. And then we're going to do the number 12 is what I like to use. And then a dollar sign at the end. A lot of people use the number 10 as their default. I like to use 12. Okay. Now that this has been applied, we should see that one single character has now been pulled up onto this line, and there are at least 12 characters at the bottom of each line. So this is great and all, but it can also be a cause for disappearance in your text. So watch this. If I take all of this text here, highlight all of it, and then go to my character styles and apply no break to it, voila, it all disappears. The reason this happens is because it is attempting to read all of that text as a single sentence and then apply no break to it and to keep the whole thing from breaking rather than just the end of the lines. Um, so sometimes if your text is disappearing like this, Double check and make sure that no break is not being applied when you're importing the text. I'm going to reapply the style of none to those and we should see it come back. Perfect. Okay. The second cause for text disappearance is large images. So just for the sake of argument, I'm going to put my cursor into the text here and then I'm going to go to file, place, and let me go find a ridiculously large image. Here's a pretty big image. Let's see if it bumps everything off the page. Yep, okay. Because this image was too tall for the page, it ended up becoming overset. It came off the page. Now there is a fix for this. I haven't touched anything yet. I haven't moved my cursor. So my cursor should still be selected on that photograph. What I'm going to do is go to the top up here and use my resize tool to drop that picture size down until it becomes visible again. Let's drop it down to 25%. There we go. Now that the image is back on the page, all the text has come back as well. All right. Sometimes what can happen is a style will become too large and a single character of that style will not be able to uh, fit within the width of the page. So let's take this for example. 
Um, this is a variation on normal. So I'm going to make a new paragraph style for this. I'm going to call it H2. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this character style or this I'm going to make this paragraph style so huge that it's going to run off the sides of the page. Let's make it something gigantic like this. And now, because it is so big, it can't fit on the page anywhere anymore, and we'll just continue to reflow the text indefinitely um, because it's never able to find enough room to land anywhere. So to fix this problem, we simply need to make this paragraph style smaller. If we drop it down to 200, we should see it come back. There we go. Now there is enough room for it to land somewhere in the file. Let's make this a regular size now. Let's drop it down to just a 30. There we go. Another thing that can happen is a break in your text frames. Currently I am utilizing my primary text frames for this file. This is indicated by the icon in the corner of this text frame. Uh, if I click on this, I can't change it here because this is being drawn from my parent page. Um, but if we compare this to a regular text box and I click on it, we see that this uh, text box does not have the icon that this one does. If I click on this one here, I can force it to break apart. And let me also turn my text threads on so we can see that. I'm going to go to view, um, go to show text threads, and now I can see how my text is flowing through the document. Sometimes what will happen is stuff like this will happen, where you will have your text flowing into these other boxes that you weren't aware of. Um, so let me give you an example. Let's say that I have this page and I draw a text box over here off to the side. And then let's say that I change the thread. If I click this, I am now breaking the thread from this frame to this frame, and now I'm going to click in this box and make it reflow over here. So now what's happening is this text is being skipped over and sometimes broken entirely. Um, if this is broken right here and I click back inside of this, now all of this text has stopped the flow entirely. And if you're in preview mode, you don't even know what's going on. All you see is that your text is gone. You don't see that it's overset in this box. Um, so you're not sure what happened to it, it's just gone. You do see that the frames are here, um, and you're going to keep on trying to reflow it. And sometimes that'll work, and you'll get into one text box, but then it's going to flow back to where it came from, um, and it just makes a big mess. So the way to fix this is to simply delete um, this centerpiece one. And now my automatic smart text reflow should pick it up again and put everything back where it goes. By the way, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, I am allowing my primary text frames to utilize smart text reflow so that every time InDesign encounters overset text at the end of a text box, it will go ahead and add more pages as needed until all of the overset text has been uh, fixed. In order to fix this, we will go up to Edit, Preferences, and then go to type. If you would like to turn on Smart Text Reflow, then go down to this section, enable Smart Text Reflow, and you can choose a different option here. I like to use the end of the story so it will add new pages in at the end of a section rather than at the, all the way at the end of the document. And I do indeed limit mine to the primary text frames because I don't want InDesign adding new pages every time it encounters, say, a caption or um, a table that has overset text. All right. The next thing you may encounter 
is whenever you use um, a paragraph style that starts on the next page. So let's take this for example, this introduction. We're going to add a new paragraph style. We're going to call this right page only. I am going to tell InDesign to use these keep options and it is only allowed to start this paragraph on the next odd page. So I've told this style to always start on the next page. What happens if more text is introduced to the top of this page is going to drop it to the next one. Uh, this is a rare instance. Sometimes this, um, this option of starting on the next page can start to have overset text sometimes. I don't encounter this very often, but I have had it happen before when I did not have smart text reflow on. All right, we got one last thing to talk about. Sometimes the baseline grid can cause your text to disappear. A baseline grid is used to ensure that your text stays on the same line across spreads. As you can see, there is a slight differentiation in these two lines. These are sitting closer to the line than these. A baseline grid will force these to align as needed. So how do we even edit the grid? We are going to go to Edit, Preferences, and then go to Grids. The baseline grid can be viewed um, in different colors, whatever you would like. Um, we can't see it currently, but this is the default for pretty much all of your documents. Um, the baseline grid will occur at every 12 points and there will be one vertical line every one inch with eight subdivisions in it. Um, so just for the sake of example, let's turn the baseline grid on where we can see it. We are going to show the baseline grid. There, if we zoom in, now it looks like ruler paper. We can see all of these little lines and we can see how these little lines are not lining up between page to page. So now let's go ahead and edit these. We're gonna to go to File, Preferences, and go to Grids. So what happens if I make these lines super duper big? If I increment every 80 points and let's say we put a grid line every nine inches with eight subdivisions. Now these lines are quite large. Um, we also need to now tell our body text here to apply itself to those grids. So let's go to normal. We're going to go to indents and spacing. Then we are going to tell all lines to align to the grid. Right now InDesign is reflowing everything to this grid, which might take a minute. So the baseline grid, um, we probably won't see any overset text or disappearing text caused by the particular settings I just put in, um, but sometimes they can cause your text to disappear entirely. If your text is attempting to align to the grid and is unable to, it will just fly off into infinity. Um, so double check that as well. Perhaps check your style, see if it is being forced to align to a grid, and then tell it to not do that. See if your text comes back. Alright, now we can see our ridiculously spread out file. You wouldn't necessarily know that this was happening due to the baseline grid unless you were zoomed in close enough to see it. Um, and if you had them even showing, you might not know that either. Alright. So this isn't necessarily causing anything to fly off the page, um, but it can be a cause for your stuff flying off the page depending on what settings you have selected. All right, everybody, I hope this is helpful. Um, if you know any other reasons why text or images could be disappearing off the page and causing everything to disappear into eternity, comment below and let me know. Um, and let everyone else in the comment section know too in case you have a new solution that I didn't explain here. Uh, and go ahead and like and subscribe, it really helps us out. 
All right, everybody. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Thank you.